Bring in Scott Tranter, our polling partner and Decision Desk HQ uh, chief. Had a late night uh, and early morning uh, as well. All right, Scott, I'm thinking about where the vote uh, is still out here. Allegheny County is the key place, perhaps, uh, which is McCormick's home state, uh, home county. Is there enough vote still left to give McCormick a uh, two or 3,000 uh, vote path? There's, there, it's, it's entirely possible. You, you nailed it. Allegheny County is telling everyone right now they're going to release an update, a full update, Friday. So that's not tomorrow. That's the next day. Um, and we won't know for sure till then, which is why everyone's waiting to call this race. There's also a significant amount of votes available or still out in Philadelphia and probably a few other pockets around the state. Um, but given how the votes have been breaking, there are enough votes out there, specifically in the absentees, that, that McCormick could make a comeback. Um, the other thing that's interesting to us is a, it, it'll probably be in recount territory who is ever ahead. All right. Uh, President Trump on Truth Social, uh, which looks a lot like Twitter, uh, Dr. Oz should declare victory. It makes it much harder for them to cheat with the ballots that they just happen to find. Uh, obviously, there were a lot of lawsuits in 2020, all of them debunked about Pennsylvania. But it does bring up this question of why is something that seems so simple taking so long even after all the reforms of 2020? Yeah, no, look, counting votes is tough. There are there are thousands of precincts. There are there are dozens of counties. Um, you have ballots coming in from overseas. You have ballots coming in by mail. And you're right. We've been doing this for for a while now. And you think these counties would be faster. But what I can say is these county officials are working as fast as they can. But it's not about speed. It's about accuracy. Um, and, you know, they're able to accept votes all the way up till the end. And they have, you know, a lot of places they rely on temporary workers to to collect them and county officials and things like that. And so their goal is not speed. Their goal is accuracy. And this is just a, a rite of passage in Pennsylvania. If you remember in 2020, that state, we didn't call until Friday, you know, several right. days after no, no, the elections. It, right. You know, it seems as though the course. That, that can certainly be the case here. Um, Doug Mastriano uh, is going in his conspiracy theories, the pictures of him on January 6th, the fact that uh, he was at a, a some kind of rally where there was some QAnon ritual performed, it's a little wacky. All of that is going to be hung around the neck of whoever wins the Republican uh, nomination. They're going to have to answer for it in every uh, interview. From your polling, how does that play come November? You know, it's interesting. People care about it, but I think uh, the people who are going to be swayed by it have already been swayed. At least that's what the polling shows. You know, the QAnon stuff, it, by and large, most people don't necessarily like it. Um, but if you're a Republican voter, you're just like, okay, I don't like it, but you know what? I'm still going to vote for my guy because of X, Y, Z. If you're a Democrat, it's just another reason why you're not going to vote, vote, vote for the candidate. And so while I think it matters, I don't think it's going to move any votes because people hmm. already have an opinion on it. All right. But, um, but, but if you're, but if you're a swing voter, if you're a swing voter out in the suburbs of, of Pittsburgh or certainly out of the suburbs around uh, Philadelphia, Bucks County, uh, Delaware County, a couple of the ones we were talking about last night, uh, you're talking about a state that swings on plus one or minus one percent. That's that's not a lot of people. Couldn't that make the difference? It certainly could if you didn't know who Mastriano was before and you didn't know this stuff about him before, especially as you pointed out in the suburbs. I think it's relatively well known given, you know, where it was in January 6th and obviously where it was in the primary. There are certainly people in, you know, in those I'm, areas I'm not in thinking as, who don't know that. I'm not thinking about as much about Mastriano, but the, the real fear always for Republicans into this midterm was that they were going to pick Senate candidates who were going to screw it up and, and blow this huge lead they have because of President Biden's approval numbers. And I'm wondering if, even though neither McCormick or Oz is that person, if Mastriano's uh, difficulty, shall we say, or questionable credentials uh, can be used against them. It certainly can, especially it'll be interesting to see if they decide to campaign together. It'll be interesting when they get asked questions about each other, which doesn't always happen, but they are in the same ticket. They are sharing the same state party. Um, you know, it, it, it could certainly come up. And Mastriano is not shy from the camera. I mean, we're talking about yeah. what happened in January 6th, but I don't think he's shying away for it. There's going to be a lot of media opportunities for him yeah. going forward. And a lot of those opportunities, you know, may, may cause problems for other Republican candidates, specifically the one who wins in Pennsylvania Senate. Yeah, and we, we've seen that before, this sort of referral effect, if there's a real someone who's really significantly crazier than the, the median uh, on the ballot. Um, all right, Scott, good to see you. Back to you either later tonight or obviously through the week uh, as we get more votes. Thank you.
Thanks. All right, good to see you. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.